I'm going to introduce our speaker for tonight, Mr. Jeremy Barclay. Mr. Barclay earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in public service from our very own Central Methodist University and a Master's degree in public administration from the University of Kansas. From 2000 to 2002, he was the city administrator of Chapel, Nebraska. Mr. Barclay began his career as the business license auditor for South Bend, Indiana. He has also served as the senior budget analyst for the United, Unified Government of Wyda County in Kansas City, Kansas. Effective 2003, Mr. Barclay was appointed the Special Assistant to the Secretary of Corrections. He was appointed the Communications Director by the current Corrections Secretary, Ray Robert, in August 12, 2012. He is responsible for overseeing legislative and public affairs, research, and victim services for the Kansas Department of Corrections. Everybody give a warm welcome for Mr. Barclay. Thank you very much. I just served, uh, sat through the initiation in the uh, next room, which was very nice. And uh, this is those who are just initiated's reward is to now sit through my speech. I'm not sure if it's fair to them. But uh, welcome to this evening. Firstly, I'd like to take a moment to wish a hearty congratulations to the latest inductees of Pi Gamma Mu. The social sciences are often responsible for a large part of our society's leadership in business, administration, and good government. We look forward to what these current leaders will bring forward into the future as the leaders of tomorrow. Today holds the promise of tomorrow, and with these young people, the promise is very bright. Because you can't get anywhere without the care and support of those around you, I'd like to acknowledge my partner Jamie and my sister Bridget, alum of CMC, for their support and attendance tonight, as well as my sons Chase and Brenna Barclay, who could not be here tonight. I'd like to thank Dr. Cherry, who is not present tonight, for her initiation and invitation to come back to my alma mater for this humbling honor. As I walked the campus, which is resplendent with the beauty of the autumnal leaves, the memories came flooding back to me. Memories of who I was prior to Central Methodist and who I became while at Central Methodist. Through the privileges and opportunities offered to me by this hallowed institution, I realized more of my potential, both personally and professionally. While here, I became a parent. I also helped serve in terms of pushing the thesis requirement for the major of public service administration, thankfully after I left, and unfortunately for <laughs> my sister before she went through the program. <laughs> Thanks to the leadership I could display in the Student Government Association, SGA, as a representative, parliamentarian, and minister of student academic affairs, I was taught to work with committees of students, faculty, and administration, and learned that age seniority, experience, could be merged to create good policy as we all have something to bring to the table. These skill sets were not missed by me and are practiced every day in my profession. Due to the public speaking skills and the compensation of my introverted personality through debate and the theatrical program, I grew as a person. I vividly rem remember my role as Peter Patron, a gay pediatrician in the Heidi Chronicles, which tested boundaries and pushed limits here, which must now have been far pushed beyond. I was able to glean the ability to logically and rationally put forward thoughts 
arguments and presentations to councils, boards, commissions, committees, legislatures, mayors, and even governors now. Thanks to my work in learning media and communication through CMC TV, the radio station, the collegian, I gained a more thorough and robust understanding of how media operates, what it's after, the purpose, goals, and functionality of it. I am fortunate to find an occupational field that matched my educational pursuits. This brings me to the topic of the evening, public safety and communication. I've served in the public sector, affecting public safety for over 15 years. Whether involving code enforcement, serving as a city manager, acting in a role of legislative affairs advocacy, or directing the communications for an agency, organization, with 3,500 employees, innumerable stakeholders, and over three and a half million direct constituents, good communication is paramount to mission efficacy. As the Communication Public Affairs Director for the KDOC, Kansas Department of Corrections, I decide the communications of what to tell people, when to tell people, how to tell people. The implications of sharing information, especially now, whether through media releases or social media outlets, is vastly essential in today's age. Throughout life, we must be proactive and remain current to maintain relevance within our lives and the greater society. Relevance is not defined here as being traditional or modern, avant-garde or classic, but to pursue whatever venue and to pursue it hard. Be involved in academics. Be involved in activities. Research internships as a student or determine abroad studies for those who have exceeded the student years. Determine cultures, places, people in our global society that interest you, fascinate you, and seek them out. We must take the initiative and avoid complacency. This personal relevance through personal curiosity and seeking translates into the communications world. Social media and the outlets of public expression evolve. Not yearly, not monthly, they evolve daily. Whether that's Facebook, old school, Twitter, a little newer, or Vine, the technology evolves and we must with it. It is my job and our job to keep up on technology and communications. At the age of seven, my household gained a video cassette recording device. I'm not sure if half the audience tonight knows what that is, it's a VCR. <laughs> it was through a, a lucky drawing. We were excited, though my parents could not program or operate it. That was my job at the age of seven. Look around as we move forward, onward, to DVDs, to video streaming, to Google Glasses. We have to maintain a current, relevant market status with social media savvy. 50% of the world is under the age of 30. 92% of children under the age of two have digital footprints, shadows, a data trail from the time of their birth or before. Two in five successful couples meet online. When the state of Kansas had four escapees leave a contracted county jail in April of 2012, the Kansas Department of Corrections 
had established a presence in social media on Facebook and Twitter only two months previously to that incident. Likes and followers had been trickling in slowly, but we began to post of the incident within three hours of the initial escape. That trickle of likes and followers turned into a stream, turned into a river, turned into a flood. Within the first three to four days, we had a 1,000% increase in presence on our social media. We were feeding the information to the public in a direct consumer way. Traditional media, and while we did issue media releases, traditional media began to follow what we were putting out to the public already. They followed in our wake. We were leading the information charge into the public. No longer were we held hostage by the chains or boundaries of what the traditional media wanted to state about us. Our product proactivity kept everyone informed and it allowed our organization to respond quickly and directly to the public for their public safety needs. However, proactivity takes an organization and communications only so far. For a plan or concept to take off and begin to soar, you have to have an end game in mind. Where do you want to go? When I attended Central Methodist, there was a, a life-changing movie <coughs> with guiding philosophies toward living. Unfortunately, that movie was called Forrest Gump. <laughs> It carried a motto involving sage advice from mom that involved a box of chocolates and never knowing what you're going to get. My mama had a different piece of advice. When you're doing a maze, start at the end and work your way to the beginning. Life goes better, easier, when you begin with the end and determine what path you want to take to get to it. Communications are no different. Social media will take you for a ride, or you can ride it. I have learned that you begin media interviews or interactions at no more of an advantage or disadvantage with the media. Social media has helped to level the playing field so that your message is directly delivered. I know of a corrections director in the United States, one state, who, when asked if he had been able to answer all of the questions asked by a TV reporter in a one-on-one -on -one interview, he answered that he had answered the questions that he knew the reporter had really meant to ask. We have to begin with the end in mind to preserve our message to guide the education that needs to be delivered on the right path and to maintain throughout that process the transparency required to encourage trust. We should focus on the course that we've set and remain dedicated to that course. Going back to the April 2012 escape, we knew the tips, clues, and release statements accordingly followed the truth and accuracy, and the media was there the entire time to help guarantee that transparency, a two-way street. Accordingly, after tracing the maze backward, knowing the ends, and creating a planned and judicious means to reach the message that we wish, want, and need to be delivered, we must prioritize tasks, people, things. Just as in our personal lives, where those we care about know this because we demonstrate that care through our actions and our deeds. Professionally, in the business world, and through our communications needs, we put first things first. Time management and proper tasking goes from theoretical to being practiced in an instant.
from moment to moment. As children, we're told to clean our plates before eating dessert. In college, we have to study before we go to the Wednesday night party. We have to cut out or limit that which does not propel us forward, and we must choose our battles wisely. When I set a legislative agenda for the Kansas Department of Corrections for a coming legislative session, I never put my primary focus on the bills that don't matter the most. After measuring the effect through careful analysis, strategic planning, cost analysis, and overall operations, we move forward on a set course. This year, in 2013, I let a simple, low-hanging fruit bill go because the legislation that yielded $56 million in cost avoidance to the state of Kansas and all taxpayers needed additional support, shepherding, and messaging continually. Continual messaging through all means and all methods, be it social media, phone calls, memos, e-blasts, all of these reflect a consistent, simple, focused message to drive your organization forward. Prioritizing is also not enough, as working together in partnership, in tandem, is more effective than attempting to creating a win while causing a loss for someone else. There has to be a little less of a competitive nature in getting your message out and more of a cooperative nature. In Kansas, we have 40 state senators, 125 state representatives. Represents what we call the three main parties of Kansas, the Democrats, the moderate Republicans, and the, and the conservative Republicans. That means I need 21 senators and 63 representatives for any bill to pass. And I have officially three and a half months to gain that kind of support. Two sessions ago, we had a legislator who was the chair of a committee that was holding up our bill. We had two days to go in the legislative session. And I had to go to that chair and ask for him to finally put our bill on the table so that we could get it passed with less than 48 hours left. His challenge to me was that he wanted a package of sizable proportions for his own district and that it was now my job to get that for him. Wasn't exactly fair, wasn't exactly right. But we cooperated, I went through the right people, I got my bill, he got his, and everybody had a win-win situation. That's what we need to see more of, and that's how communications <coughs> needs to work in today's society. With regard to interviews, you feed the media, and they keep you fed as well. You have to be fair with the media. No cloak and daggers. No hiding the peanut. Open transparency. It is possible to compromise in a situation without compromising yourself. The media wants stories. We want four offenders apprehended. We can work together and come up with a mutually beneficial situation. <clears throat> However, you must seek first to understand what they need and then be understood. We see the world as we are, not as it is. We have an internal bias that we cannot bypass. We have to recognize that. I have to recognize that every day professionally. Perceptions come out of our own experiences, and they flavor what we do in communications and anywhere in the business world. Whether negotiating legislation or media interviews, you need to attempt to reach the passions, interests, and desires of those with whom you are negotiating. What is it that they need and want, and what is it that you need and want, and how can you get to that through their lens? But 
That being said, at the end of the day, you have to take care of yourself. There is no fail-safe in life. You are in charge. If you rely on others to chart your course, you will end up lost. You don't have to know what you're going to wind up doing in life. Who does? But you should have an idea of who you are and your strengths and weaknesses. What are you striving toward for today? How will you get there? Changing directions does not mean that you're lost. It means that you sharpen your focus in another direction. The goal is to never be directionless. Always be going full steam ahead in whatever direction you're headed and have confidence in doing so. Social media is our friend, is your friend, because you've grown up with it. You're comfortable with it, you're familiar with it. Many of you use tablets in your daily life, but how many of you use them when you were five? A recent study showed that 40% of kindergartners use iPads in their daily studies. We must begin to cater toward this type of an audience in our communicative needs. Utilizing six criteria for success in communications and your professional life, we must be exemplifying proactive relevance. We must determine an end game. We have to prioritize what is most important provide cooperation to those around us, provide relatability in the message that we are providing, and at the end of the day, be yourself while you're doing it. As Bob Dylan once stated, the times, they are a-changing. We must be nimble enough to adapt and change those times change ourselves in the new digital age of communications. At this time, I would like to take any questions that you might have. 